So I'm going to set up this environment once again. So I will not give any explanation because this is already done. So quickly I can do it. So I'm selecting CentOS uh, image and uh, instance type. I'll take you dot medium and the uh, three instances. I'll take. I'm going to allow all traffic. Enough. So this is the process I'm going to follow now. So I enabled all ports. Now I'm I need to install all these commands. So quickly I need to install it. Okay, so there are the three machines. So let me name them. So first, let me configure this machine. Anyone have this setup? Or you also deleted everything? I don't have Praveen, I have deleted that uh, once I practiced everything. Okay. And So for CentOS, default is CentOS is a username.
so done the configuration on the kernel uh, master so let me do it on other machine actually i forgot that i lost my aws account otherwise i could have done this today morning itself Of we can use Google Cloud also instead of doing this, but I'm not sure whether how it will work. So you guys try to install even COPS also, like how to set up Kubernetes cluster with the help of COPS also, you can give it a try different methods and you can note it down what is the difference with Kubernetes, COPS, okay. And uh, we already had a discussion about that, but when you do practical, you can get more things to know. Okay, so now I need to execute this token command. I think it's added. It will tell get notes. One node is added. It will take few seconds or one minute to get it online. So let me log into the another machine.
okay so now it's done um this will take maybe one minute time to come online the notes are ready uh, now we talk about uh, prometheus i think we need one more server where we can install helm okay so why we are going to use helm because already we discussed in the previous sessions uh, the purpose of helm you can sit in the remote machine from there you can able to deploy the applications so when uh, we were discussing the course at that time i was using the jenkins server why because jenkins server we will configure the pipeline through that pipeline it will deploy the applications inside the cluster okay so here we created the cluster and uh, this is a jenkins server and inside this we configured helm so we i hope you guys remember the helm and tiller concept so this is the helm and uh, here tiller component will run any of the machine in any of the worker node so when i execute uh, helm install and iphone iphone upgrade option and i used to give the helm chart which contains all the yaml files whatever the resources are need to be created on the cluster like deployment uh, service like a node port or load balancer and hpa horizontal pod autoscaler config maps so these are the components what are the components required for that specific microservice or application those related yaml files will be kept under the helm chart and that helm chart we used to deploy from the jenkins so we have written the two different pipelines if you remember one is for ci job uh, whenever the code check in happens then it will do the integration and it will create an artifact called jar file and with the help of the jar file it will create a docker image and that docker image used to store inside the nexus that is ci complete cd job it will pick up the image and uh, it will use the helm chart okay and in the helm command we used to use that helm chart and image we used to provide okay then we able to install so this here we used to use helm why because helm command will execute inside the shell of this jenkins server in the pipeline whatever you configure that's why we configured helm and tiller component so that it will go and talk to the tiller and tiller will take care of the deployment that is what we have done so now we know it in jenkins because i'm not configuring any cd job here but i want this helm and tiller communication so that now what i'm going to do these charts are customized for our application but already i told you there are some stable charts are available like if you want to configure efk elastic search flow indian kibana like prometheus this we no need to create helm charts manually these charts are already providing by their vendors just you need to go to the stable repository and from there you can get the charts everything is available based upon your requirement you can modify it and you can use it so to do that i need a machine or even if i have my local also my local laptop also if it is installed with helm the only thing is i need to initiate this tiller concept okay uh, for that also we had a document helm and tiller configuration for that we don't need any jenkins because here we no need to we are not configuring here uh, any jenkins server but in real time mostly we'll configure this helm inside the jenkins because jenkins will when the pipeline executes we'll define helm command inside the pipeline that's why to execute that helm command we install jenkins server uh, helm inside the jenkins server but as of now i am not configuring any cd job now just i want helm command so it can be any plain linux server or it can be on my windows machine also if i install helm package inside my windows machine so here if, if we are not taking any jenkins then take any normal user also in a linux machine 
to that user give full permissions and uh, then install this helm package okay and after that in the cluster we need to execute these commands why because the stiller component these are like authority privileges okay we are giving to the tiller because when helm is talking to tiller tiller responsibility is to deploy the applications okay so it should have control or access on the cluster for that we are creating one service account and we are creating a cluster role so that this role contains full privileges then only tiller can able to install any kind of applications which is telling by the helm okay so these things we need to do it now so first of all we need to have one linux machine so already i think i have one linux machine now apart from uh, our cluster this is the linux machine let me mention this and help okay so let me log into this one So here, uh, I'll try from directly root. No need to create user account. Okay, we'll see whether it will accept or not. So here. I'm downloading Helm package. The curl command it will be available in local and then let me give execute permission because it doesn't execute it's a script and already i told you if we are using this means you want to install specific version why because um, sometimes because a lot of times i faced uh, while i'm doing practical in the real time the compatibility of the latest version might be problem with your cluster so you need to verify that first which version of your helm is compatible with which version of your kubernetes cluster so i installed 1.15 so that's the reason this is compatible because sometimes you will not get proper uh, output when you're using helm commands okay so again we need to test it we need to open case and then they'll get back to you that these versions are not compatible so that's why you need to make sure which version we want to install so this is how uh, we'll install if you directly execute this one without these options then it will install the latest version so again let me copy this helm installed now in the cluster let me create uh, this tiller. I think this is the master. Let me see. Notes. Notes are ready now. So, creating service account. Uh, executed. Yeah, okay. And uh, now creating cluster role, cluster role binding. Okay, these two commands on the um, cluster and now I need to copy the config file so config file from kubernetes cluster to the linux server where I am trying to install the this helm so that then only when i execute this command it will go and talk to the kubernetes cluster right otherwise how it know we have a cluster and it should go and communicate so to do that we need to copy that file so this was for jenkins that's why this all the steps but for uh, uh, here no need all these things this is the one the separate linux server 
I'll just create a directory called dot cube and uh, vi config inside that I'll paste that content. Okay, so cat etc kubernetes admin dot conf. Okay. Cat etc this is a content so i need to copy here from the master server and i'm going to paste it here okay so that this route can able to execute from here also i think uh, we don't have kubectl here in this linux machine but it can able to access cluster now helm version if you see mm. okay still no we did not enable the tiller that's why it is uh, giving error to show the version of the um, cluster okay so now it is done we need to execute this command helm init so it will do initialization so we have this config file inside this Linux machine. So it will go and talk to that machine and uh, it will initialize. So before that, if you remember, inside this uh, Kubernetes cluster, kubectl get pods hyphen n cube hyphen system. Okay, actually the file where to whichever user account that file is copied, only that user account can able to execute kubectl commands because it sends API call. When you are executing command kubectl, what it will do, it will send an API call to the master. So to send that information, that admin.con file copied as a config file inside the user directory called Pravin. So that's why he can able to execute. If you copy the same file to the root also, root can also able to execute this kubectl commands. Okay, so now kubectl get pods hyphen n cube hyphen system. So here if you see you don't see any uh, tiller pod as of now. So now once I execute uh, the command helm init command then it will initialize and it will create a tiller deployment. It will do deployment. Okay, so from here Error. <clears throat> connection refused okay why because i think uh, here for this machine also i need to enable all the ports it will expect some ports to communicate so from kubernetes cluster to this machine it needs to enable some ports so instead of that what i'll do for this linux machine also I'll enable all the ports. Now let me try again. Connection refused. We have dot cube. Where did I copy that config file? Okay, I did a mistake. I did not copy this config file inside this directory. So it is looking for config file inside this directory. I created outside of this directory. Okay. Now if I go to dot cube, it is available now. Okay. Now let me execute the same command helm in it. It's done. Okay. Now if I type helm version, could not find a ready tiller pod. Why? Because it's getting deployed. Now if I go to the master server, 
see tiller pod got deployed just 14 seconds ago so what it is doing when you execute helm init tiller then it's deploying a pod here and even if you see kubectl get uh, deploy and hyphen n cube fn system this was a deployment has been done okay that's the reason it pod gets created so now you can see it's up and running and go to that linux machine and again check the helm version now it should show this way it will connect to the cluster and from the cluster also it should show the version okay then only it's communicating with the cluster now from here we can able to connect okay so this is like this linux server which we created and this is the cluster and tiller got deployed and here i installed helm that's done now why we are making a range of this because now to install the prometheus okay so now setup is ready now we talk about the prometheus so what is the purpose of prometheus now so prometheus see before this uh, cloud whoever worked as an linux administrator windows administrator they might know there was an monitoring okay infrastructure monitoring like um, how much if you have a data center inside your data center you have hundreds of servers who is going to monitor that whether which server is down which server is up what is the file system usage and how much cpu it is using how much ram it is using and if it is a uh, cpu is using more utilization then how we come to know all this monitoring was done by some tools it's a paid tools are there and uh, free tools are also there like one of the tool is called nagios is a free tool and paid tools are like uh, solar winds hpo ibm tools lot of tools are available in the market each company will purchase those licensing and uh, they will install the tools on some servers let's say windows server 2016 or 19 and uh, they'll install that software and inside that software they will configure all your servers information what is the ip of the server whether it's a prod or uh, test or development and file systems cpu utilization they used to install some client software inside this machine so that they can able to communicate to this machine okay so these tools will monitor whenever if any server is down or any file system let's say windows d drive is 90 percent then it will this tools team used to configure the alerts what alerts so it will trigger an email if you configure it is monitoring but how we how the tools team will come to know they will configure an alerts okay so if it is a unix server they will configure unix team uh, distribution list and uh, their team dl also so once you get the alerts based on that there will be separate ticketing team will be there or monitoring team itself will be there they will create a ticket for you based upon the alert if you get production server down alert so they will check if it is real alert or not and uh, it depends again each organization so if it is real alert then they will create a ticket and they will assign to respective team if it is unix team unix team will get alert and if it is database team if database tables are having any problem database is down or database server is down database team will also get alerts like this respective team will get alerts network team will get network switches routers down storage team will get storage related alerts so this everything is monitoring is very very important then you can take action immediately based on that tickets will get raised uh, and we'll work on the tickets if production server is down then you need to react immediately if it is really down if it is really down then uh, how quickly you can resolve it so this is called monitoring as i said nagios is a free tool solar winds hpo lot of tools are there we'll monitor it the same thing we need to monitor our kubernetes cluster also what are the worker nodes are there okay and what are the pods getting created for each pod how much utilization is happening right and uh, file systems everything lot of things even in your applications api also you can monitor so all this to monitor we are going to use prometheus so why can't we use nagios or solar means why because our kubernetes cluster is a dynamic environment 
so what is the dynamic environment here pods are getting created and pods are getting deleted again pods will newly gets created right in previous scenario which i explained in the traditional data center the virtual machines are fixed once you create virtual machines when you create physical machines those ips will be fixed okay those servers will be always available it's like a static but here pods automatically sometimes gets created deleted new pod gets created right so they are dynamic so you cannot configure any specific pod name or pod ips in the configuration so prometheus will take care of it and it will collect all the logs and it will give you in the dashboard okay so to do that uh what we need to do same like eft only like what it is going to do prometheus when you install this it will uh, in, uh deploy some pods related to the prometheus and uh, it will collect all the information of the pods from this worker node and it will send it to the another server okay which we call as a prometheus server so when we deploy this prometheus application it will create multiple pods okay prometheus uh, server and uh, prometheus uh, alert manager and prometheus uh, exporter so these are different kinds of pods gets created so exporters means what here exporter pods will create how many nodes you have in each node exporter pod will create and that will export the data information metrics from this worker node to the prometheus server this also might be running somewhere inside the same worker nodes this prometheus uh, server also might be assume this is running here so these exporter pods will send that information to here and um, to the prometheus server and we can able to access this prometheus server also okay and this alert manager means if you want to configure alert manager just not discuss if you want to get in notification then you can configure alert manager so all these things will get deployed when you deploy prometheus and how you can view this with the help of grafana so we have a separate you need to install separate grafana so when you install grafana you will get created with the uh, service also uh, like load balancer or notepad whatever you define inside the file so with the help of grafana we can able to access the dashboard and inside the dashboard we are going to give data source so what is the data source prometheus is the data source so we will give prometheus a data source and give this ip of this uh, prometheus so it will collect all this uh, information from this prometheus graph uh, server to this grafana so visualize for visual purpose we are going to use grafana dashboard to see what are the logs of uh, this matrix logs of the prometheus so we can see everything whatever is configured and you can configure a lot of matrix also later on it's up to us okay so we need to install prometheus and grafana now so now that's why we install this why because we have a prometheus uh, uh, stable version is there so helm charts but we can use that helm chart and we can do a little bit of modification from our end and we can deploy this prometheus inside these missions okay so now let's go and i will show you so as i said in the stable um, repository you can able to find the prometheus helm charts so if you see here uh, already i told you this is the values.yaml file where you can see all the variables are placed un under this values.yaml file and inside this template you can see these are the resources are going to get created if you see these many resources are going to get created daemon sets is there deployment is there persistent volume claims is there okay lot of uh, components are going to be created config maps stateful sets 
vertical pod auto scaler is also is available okay so we are going to deploy this but before that what i am going to do we will go through this values.yaml file so it expects some volumes why because see all the collection of the data it need to store some way so we need volumes we already discussed volumes like mtdir host path what is pv physical volume what is physical volume claim also we discussed in real time we use physical volume and physical volume claim because this is a persistent data we need it because if all of a sudden if you are uh, uh, let's say this prometheus server pod has been restarted or deleted then it will delete the volume and it will get the new volume so whatever the data was available the data will be lost so what are the logs was sending by this exporter to your prometheus server the data will not be available so that's why in real time we use physical volume and physical volume claims so the data will be persistent available okay so that you can practice but here i'm go not going to use any persistent volumes i'm going to use mtdr only by default okay so it will create in locally for temporary purpose to practice when you delete the pod the data will also get deleted so here if you go to the values.ml file here this is all the configuration for prometheus like alert manager push gateway all these things will be available i need to do a little bit of modification why because i will show you here type uh, so if you see here type is showing uh, cluster ip this is for al alert manager okay so for alert manager we don't want our type should be node port or load balancer but the server whatever i'm talking about this server because when uh, grafana is trying to access prometheus it should be accessible from the outside so that's why we need to give uh, this is for alert manager service okay you know right services load balancer node port and cluster ip so when we deploy prometheus it will create three to four services one is for alert manager one is for prometheus server one is for gateway so, so another one is this is for exporter even we don't want a node port or load balancer for exporter if you remember cluster ip means what internal communication in the cluster inside that one only node port means what from outside also we can able to access it okay so we want not for node exporter so let me search again So this is the one if you see list of ip addresses at which the prometheus server service available for this i need to change it okay so this i need to change so how i can change no need to worry so here in this linux machine where i installed helm so we can just do helm repo list so if you see here kubernetes chart dot storage dot this is a default stable repo means it will connect to this repositories okay so now helm search prometheus so these many helm charts are available it connected to this uh, stable repo and uh, it is showing this one and this is the one we are talking about stable prometheus and this is a chart version okay prometheus is a monitoring system and time okay so now i am going to use this one but what i am going to do we have a command called helm inspect okay so i am going to view values.yaml file means i no need to clone locally to view the values.yaml file with this command without having this prometheus helm chart into my local still i can able to see file of that prometheus helm chart so now what i'm going to do i'm going to view the values file okay stable 
prometheus if you execute this it will display it's like a cat command okay no need to have cat command the file should be available locally but this no need to have locally so it will connect to that stable repo prometheus helm chart and it will give you the output of the values.yaml file and that what i'm going to do that output i'm going to redirect it to some other file okay slash tmp slash prometheus dot values okay i'm re redirecting that information to this file whatever the output is going to come it's done now if you see slash tmp why tab is not working okay so this is a file and uh, if you can see this is the values.yaml file so here i need to do that update the type okay so i will open this file and uh, i'll search with type so so here type cluster but we need to be very careful like uh, this is for alert manager if you see this is for alert manager so i don't want this and uh, and this is for node exporter if you see here node exporter even i don't want for this one and um, and this is for prometheus server okay so here i would like to change it and uh, and here we need to give node port okay and uh, we need to give port node port 32323 three, something like this so we need to give 32000 to 32000 some uh, range is there inside that only we need to give the port range so i am giving this node port okay so now apart from this and uh, let me search persistent volume if you see here persistent volume by default this is false if you make it true then we'll create a persistent volume claim so if persistent volume it is trying to create then it should have persistent volume also right so if you remember the pv pvc concept so first it will be pv and it will be pvc and this pvc this pvc we can use inside a deployment file okay so now we are we don't have any pv pv system why because this is a fresh installation if you remember nfs dynamic provisioner if you have that then automatically your prometheus will create um, physical volume physical volume claims and it will use by the pods if but you need to enable true here if you enable true here then it will expect his uh, persistent volume claim if you don't enable then it is using empty air so i'm going with this by default as of now okay so empty air automatically it will create so i'm not changing anything so this persistent volume it is available in multiple places i think so okay and uh, persistent volume if true prometheus will create a use uh, if false so let me make it as false here okay so here you change it wherever persistent volume it is showing true and uh,
so here also it is there so just make it uh, false Okay, I think uh, all the three places like for alert manager for node exporter and for Prometheus server we change it to the false. Okay, now that's it. These changes we need to done and once it is done save this file Once this is saved. This is in the local now helm chart is in the stable location. Okay in the repo Now I would like to install that by using this values.yml file I don't want to use the default values.yml file which is going to get from the helm charts so for that help install stable prometheus now hyphen hyphen name give this release name what is the release name you want to give this is a release name and uh, hyphen hyphen values now i am telling that use these values okay so i am declaring from here so that it is using this if you don't give these values then it will take directly from the default uh, values.yml file from here but i am giving this iphone and values telling that use this values.yml file and uh, apart from this i am going to give different namespace i don't want to install it on the default namespace as I already told you when we talked about namespace class so we want to create we don't want to create all the resources in the same default namespace if you install prometheus and in different namespace then it will be easy to uh, filter right whenever i want to go and see prometheus filter stuff i can go and see in the separate namespace if all the parts are in the same default then it will messed up grafana prometheus efk application everything is showing in the default namespace then all will be mixed and will be difficult to manage them so that's why i would like to install it and deploy it on the separate namespace so now let me execute this one fail service uh, is invalid spec type unsupported value node port supported values cluster ip okay i missed n caps i should give i gave in this way okay Okay. Here I need to give in uppercase n. Okay. So helm list if you see. It is when I executed first time it is in the failed state. So again, I'm trying to with the same release name It is telling it's already exists. So I need to delete this helm delete this release name I can I can purge Now again, I'll do that Okay, it's deployed you see what are the resources it got deployed everything it will show here in this deployment see the name is release name and namespace is prometheus config maps it got deployed two config maps and daemon set this is deployment if you remember when we talk about the deployment types stateful set daemon set so one daemon set if you remember the purpose of daemon set i'm not sure whether you remember or not exporter is deployed with the daemon set and these are deployments and these are the these many pods got created getting created and these are the services if you see these are the services alert manager static metrics node exporter push gateway and this is the server this is i gave 
node port that's why it's created node port 32323 okay and uh, these are the service accounts got created cluster role cluster role binding why because it should have the access to the cluster because it is pulling the information matrix resources right so that's why it should have a role otherwise it cannot able to access the cluster and get the information right so that's why if you see here nodes deprecated and moved to this location prometheus server can be accessed by port 80 on the following so you can able to access this to get the latest version of helm charts i think so deprecated means it's not supported or it's expired version okay you can see here maybe the latest one if you see nine days ago three days ago community kubernetes helm charts so now if i go to the master when i type kubectl get pods it will not show because why it is not showing why the pods are not showing here why the pods are not showing why it is not showing no one knows why it is not showing We need to create the main script. Not. Hmm? Name space. Name space? Just now I told you, right? It is in the different namespace. When you type this, it is will be in the default namespace. So you should go and check in the hyphen n Prometheus. So you should check in the different namespace, means wherever you deployed. Okay, so these are gets deployed here. kubectl get all hyphen n hyphen uh, n Prometheus. This will show you what all means what whatever the components got deployed inside this prometheus namespace it will show everything so these many components got deployed pods service daemon sets deployments okay so here if you see this is alert manager pod is running and node exporter as i said node exporter means what each pod will go and deploy in each worker node and it will collect the information and it will send it to the server okay prometheus server right and alert manager i am not going to show you how to configure alert manager all these things you can do an r d okay later on when you are familiar with the, all this kubernetes concepts so you can configure alert manager also it will send an alert and these are the services so all our cluster ips only i configured prometheus server as a node port okay so this is what i configured and uh, so these are deployments whatever the deployment so if you want to access 32323 i can able to access by taking the any of the node ip
Take any work or not. IP. So this is Prometheus server which we can able to access but we don't need this one. We are not going to do anything here. So this will be given into the Grafana. So what I am going to do. So uh, we'll continue on Monday. It's the same time 8 o'clock or 8 15 8 15 just because AWS class will be going on. It will complete at 8 15. So if you guys join on Monday, then I'll show you installing Grafana and how to add data source in the Grafana so that it will connect to this Prometheus and from the Grafana dashboard how we can see uh, the dashboard okay how we can see the metrics all these things will show you on the Monday with the remaining part okay so in the previous session we were talking about Prometheus configuration we have done that so now we need to configure uh, Grafana Okay, so to that Grafana, we are going to add a data source as a Prometheus. Okay, so we need to install it. I think we need to do this three and this one also. So Grafana. For Grafana, not only the Prometheus, it can be application also can be a data source, or it can be database also can be data source. Like you have an any MySQL database or any database you have, and uh, you want some uh, information in the Grafana dashboard of database related things. Also, you can configure data source as a database also, or Prometheus. Prometheus is what it is doing. It is collecting all the metrics and uh, that data it is collecting and storing in the Prometheus server and that server information we are giving in the Grafana as a data source so that it will collect the information it will give you the uh, in that visualized okay dashboard so like that not only Prometheus you can add database as a data source or application as a data source like application uh, functionality whenever that application is down that is also you will get to know whether how it is accessing what is the network traffic of that application everything you can configure so here this so first i'll connect to this um, linux server Okay, so same way how we deployed Prometheus, same way we can use the Grafan also. Okay, the same procedure we can use it. Now, Helm list if you see the Prometheus the last time we deployed it is through this machine with the help of Helm command and uh, Same way if you search Helm search Grafana, so it will connect to the stable repository and it will show us the Helm chart of that um, Grafana, okay So now again here also we need to do some modifications in the values.yml file as I said this Helm chart all this values are defined inside the values.yml file okay so 
whatever you define inside the values.yml it will pick up it's like a variables so variables has been configured inside the values.yml file so we need to do a little bit modification to this uh, values.yml file and then we are going to use same way like what we have used for prometheus so modified values.yml file will give us a reference to take it instead of the default values.yml file okay so i hope you remember like prometheus uh, grafana helm chat whatever the objects it is going to create if you see in the templates so what are the objects it is going to create this many objects all these objects values if you go to the deployment.yml file all these values it is taking from the values.yml file okay you know right i hope you guys are knowledge about uh, scripting so what will do scripting instead of hard coding values we will give it as a variable okay it will pick up that variable and that variable name we will give here same way in helm charts all these values we can define in the values.yml file and we will tell here that go and pick it from there so instead of modifying all these files we always go to the values.yml file and we'll change there okay it will be easy in real time it will be easy for uh, automation purpose okay we don't give hard code values over here okay so all these values any file you take all this uh, values it is taking from the values.yml file okay this is pvc to create a physical volume claim understood right so now we are modifying that values.yml file if you see here this is the values.yml file and uh, here it will tell replicas equal to one and a deployment strategy type is rolling update so from here it will take okay so this readiness pro path image this is the image location everything already this i discussed in the helm chat session right so all the values will be collected from here so now i am going to modify few things inside this why because if i check type uh, yes this is showing as a cluster ip cluster ip means sort internally it can communicate but i want to access it through the browser so it should be node port okay so i am or it can be load balancer ip address so i am going to configure it with the node port so that by taking any of the node port node ip i can able to access this grafana through the dashboard right and um, i'm going to give the port also here the node port port some 32300 something like that i'm going to give this is the one thing i would like to change and uh, admin password is disabled here means when the grafana dashboard is going to open we need to provide the admin dashboard password so here what are the password you can set it here the same password you can use to log into the grafana dashboard and another thing is persistence here persistence volume enable persistence using persistence volume claim so if you already uh, in real time you should always go with the persistent volume claim you know the difference right persistent volume claim from where it will get created physical uh, physical pv so you should have physical pv how you are going to get physical pv physical pv you are going to get depends what kind of cluster it is whether if it is an a case then you might use uh, azure file storage or maybe azure disk storage to create as a pv and from that pv it will create pvcs okay or if it is an NFS or else if it is an AWS then it can be AWS EBS okay or it can be NFS over there or a lot of other storage options are available so it depends upon what storage you are using to create physical PV from that physical PV it can create persistent volume claim 
because here grafana if you are not using persistent volume claims then the grafana pod if it is restarted deleted and created the data will be erased why because by default it will take mtdir so you guys remember mtdir means what locally wherever it got deployed in whichever workload it got deployed it will create a volume and it will mount it but when it is pod is deleted the data will also will be erased so you are not going to get the data so that's why the recommended is pvc but in this scenario i'm not going to use any because again i need to configure pv pvc all these things you can do that from your end r d so if you have any pvcs available then you should enable here okay enable true then it will take physical volume claim automatically it will try to create but before that you should have pv should be ready as i said if you are claiming for pvc 10 gb pv should be there with 10 gb or more than that 10 20 30 it will take that complete pv so here in this uh, helm chart they are already defined to create pvc also let's see here in the templates pvc so they have a yaml file to create pvc okay but there already should be pv should be there with the size whatever they are defining if it is not there then pvc will not create if the pvc will not create then your pod will not come online when in case if you uh, make persistent volume enable equal to true if you don't enable for practice purpose then you can use mdir by default will take and uh, as of now you can manage it but in real time implement definitely you need to configure pvc pv all these things okay so these are things i i am not going to change uh, persistent volume to enable true let it be false only so here where is this, this one so this is a helm inspect okay so helm inspect helm inspect and um, this one okay. values forgot the command yeah helm inspect values and this is the helm chart okay redirect the output to the slash emp slash grafana dot values so it will it's like a cat command but uh, directly we are viewing the values.yaml file from the helm chart no need to clone locally available locally and that output we are re redirecting it to the grafana dot values so grafana dot values it's a text file uh, Pravin. sorry a grafana dot values is it a text file yes you can give any name so this for my reference i'm just giving reference values it's a text file only you can give any name okay only okay. you can just give grafana.txt or anything you can give okay so i'm going to modify this with the vi editor and uh, open this file and just uh, search with type and uh, type here service the naming convention uh, make sure that it's correct okay so here yes sensitive this is compulsory node port n caps p caps and then ip address node port 32325 okay this is a port number i am giving so here in the node port p is caps okay 
so if you are give any uh, case sensitive then it will not accept so this is the one and another one is um, admin password where is that so let me search for okay here so admin password give any password strong password cloud free at the rate one two three this is the password i'm giving okay that's it and as i said if you want to change so persistence here if you see enabled is false is there then you need to make it as a true okay then if you have a pvc ready with you then this pvc will get created from that pv otherwise it will not get created deployment will be failed so now save it now install this one so helm install stable grafana this is a stable uh, helm chart and uh, hyphen hyphen name this is the release name like whatever the release name for this prometheus when you type helm list because through helm you are installing so helm should have that record what you are doing so this is the release name so you can give anything i am giving grafana and hyphen hyphen values we are telling that take this values instead of default values and then i want this should be in a different namespace prometheus in different namespace and grafana should be in a different namespace and this is a different namespace okay it's done and uh, you see here these are the things got deployed and this is the name of the release name and inside this namespace it got deployed and whatever the components were inside the templates directory all those components has been created okay cluster role cluster role uh, role binding okay config maps deployment pod got created service got created secrets all is got created and if it is telling this is also deprecated it seems the helm chart and this is the new helm chart they are providing to us okay so if you see get your admin user password by running this one also you are going to get that the password means if you don't configure in the um, values.yml file also you are going to get by using this command okay so let me log into the master server now Mm, CentOS. Okay. So let me copy this. I should use as a Pavin user account because this user doesn't have access. Okay, so if you see what are the password was assigned. If you don't assign any password, if you give here, it will give some default password. Okay, so now uh, let me see kubectl get pods iPhone n in the Grafana and uh, kubectl get all iPhone n. Grafana all means all resources which are created in the Grafana namespace. So these are the resources Okay, and this is the service. This is a 32325 is a IP type is node port which got deployed So now I can able to access this Grafana by using any of the public IP of my node and using this port Okay, so now let me go to my any of the worker node take the public IP
three two three two five. So this is a Grafana dashboard. So admin and uh, password is cloud free card rate one two three. Okay, so here you can see tutorial data source and dashboards Grafana fundamentals. You can go through it. Okay, and you can go through the documentation. See even this Grafana you can install in your local laptop also. Let's say you have desktop also installed in your local laptop if you want to test it. And in your Windows also you can install. You have Windows version of Grafana also, and you can use an IP local host and the port number of that uh, Grafana. You can able to access it, and uh, you can give the data so that way also it can work. No need to have any Linux machine or Prometheus. Different ways it can be used. Okay, so now here you can create dashboards, and you can get the docs also easily. You can see how you can create it. And uh, this is data source. Add your first data source. This is as of now independent. It's not connecting to any Prometheus now. It's deployed, but it's not. We did not confirm anywhere that you should get the data from the Prometheus, right? This is an independent uh, service now running. So here, add data source. So now here it is checking where is your data source. So Influx DB, Elasticsearch is also one of the kind like same like Prometheus, and um, see SQL database, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL. If you if you want to monitor, so for example, database we have tables. Tables, rows, columns, a lot of things are there. If you want to monitor that one also, you can configure here. Okay. So, CloudWatch, Azure so, Monitor. Uh, Praveen, I mean, here let's say you know, like we have deployed a pod, okay, so DB, iSQL. Uh, so, how do we com configure? So, do we give here uh, the, the pod IP address? If the data, no. So database always is having an IP address. Yes. Okay. So to access that, you will give that IP address, not the oh. pod IP address. Already we discussed that right? pod IP randomly is going to change. So oh, for your oh, database, oh. you might be configuring some node port or load balancer or cluster IP, right? That IP right. address you need to configure here. Sure. So multiple oh. sources are there to configure your data source. So we are configuring. Prometheus. Okay. So here we need to give the Prometheus IP. Now here um, HTTP. I am going to give Prometheus is running on this machine. So it can also it is also configured with node port and uh, kubectl get SVC iPhone n Prometheus SVC means the network services it will show and this is a node port I configured and uh, 32323 is a port number but I need to give the public IP so let me take the same public IP here because this is a node IP right so I can use the same IP and uh, Two thirty five three two three two three. Okay, and uh, here we are going to give browser. That's it. Save and test. It's trying to reach, fail to fetch. Oh, sorry, it is double HTTP. Data source is working. Okay, clearly we can understand. Okay, it's connected to Prometheus and it is working because this IP is a node IP. So Prometheus is also running on Kubernetes cluster, and this is also node port. So you can use any node IP address, any node IP address, and what are the port it is running. So I was using the same IP for accessing Grafana and same IP for Prometheus because it's both are running on node port service, and ports are different. Okay. So now this is done, and uh, now we can go to the home. Here, this is complete. Data source is complete. 
now we can create a dashboard here create a dashboard uh, add a new panel and uh, mm, here we can the matrix can be added okay so what kind of matrix cpu the container cpu load average so this matrix will be available based upon your data source if it is a database this matrix will be different if it is something else this matrix will be different so this matrix is given by your prometheus so cpu system cpu container cpu period so all is related to the containers so if i check this one what are the parts it is running it will show you here okay so format how you want the time series I mean, does you AWS can... CloudWatch uh, support this uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster monitoring? Yes, previously okay. when I was showing you the uh, source, data source, AWS CloudWatch is also available. Okay. If you see here, slowly it is showing now this container spots information. Yes, so the all this information. So this kind of matrix you can configure. Okay, and you can visualize your data. And, uh, and we can export this uh, data into log format, right? Is it yes. Again, from here, you can configure uh, alert manager so that you get alerts whenever if there is something is down, okay, or uh, something is problem. Lot of things are there. You can go through this Grafana dashboard. Uh, lot of things you can configure. And if you don't want this dashboard, uh, you will get some other dashboards also means viewing if you don't like this dashboard you can get different dashboards also for here i think that um, save dashboard new dashboard test okay uh, here you can see import right so this import option so grafana is giving you a lot of dashboards so you can go and check which dashboard you like and uh, those dashboards is having one id that id if you give it here it will go and connect to that and it will import the dashboard means the view like how we call it as a themes if you change the themes the same way here the dashboard view if you don't like this default dashboard you can get some different dashboards also Okay, if you see here right side, these are different uh, dashboards. You can have a view and uh, whichever dashboards you like. Uh, I think uh, where is the code of the dashboard? Okay, so this is the dashboard uh, ID. Copy this ID, and if you give it here, so this dashboard will be imported here. So if you give that ID, this dashboard will be imported. So like this, you can check. Uh, this is these are the images. How it looks like, what kind of things you are expecting. If it is Kubernetes related, then uh, this is a node name, OS version, Docker version. All this it is showing. For Kubernetes, I think it will be good to have this dashboard. Okay, so that way also you can import it. Where is that? So which uh, data source is there? Based on that, you can configure this. 
this is a data source and import so namespaces if you see five namespaces so previously this all things was not showing because of this kubernetes dashboard it's collected respective information and total pods are 20 pvcs are not available cluster age recently i configured right uh, i think on saturday this is the cluster age and uh, best efforts pods uh, and these are the node names memory used so this is this dashboard is suitable for cluster that's why i imported this one so based upon what is the purpose what is your data source based on that we can have our own dashboards okay so i did not configure any of these things automatically it configured and it is showing all the information 